Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So if you saw my video where we played around making our own, you know, patterned paper from book pages, I'll just grab in the pieces that we made. We made these kind of patterned papers with the book pages. Um, I thought we would have a play today with making some other similar things, but using the sheet music instead. So I've been having a little bit of a play. My hands are already a little bit messy. Um, <laughs> I have been having a play with mixing up the colours on my stamps um, a little bit. Uh, I don't very often do this because I find it a bit fiddly, but, you know, we'll we'll give this a try. So what I've done, I've taken some sheet music here and I have just gessoed over the entire sheet, left it to dry. So what I'm going to do is ink it up a little bit before we get started, you know, with any of our decorating and stamping. So, you know, this is vintage sheet music, so it's pretty coloured anyway. Um, but I'm just going to go over it slightly, just in one or two places where it might be, you know, not quite so coloured. So just go over it like that. You know, because we want it looking really nice and grungy. And obviously, as we discovered, you know, well, I mean, as we knew, but obviously I uh, kind of forgot really. Um, you know, once you've stamped with distress inks, you, you know, it's difficult to then distress them with the, the blender tool. So, you know, I'm going to just do this first. So doesn't have to be very neat, you know, because we're going to be stamping all over this anyway. So you're really not going to notice too much what we've done there. So I'll pop that to one side. So I talked um, in a video recently that I haven't ever used um, this large rose in the Catercraft um, clear stamp set that I had. So. I thought it was high time, you know, rectified that. So I'm taking my Victorian velvet and I'm taking my peeled paint. Might use my crushed olive, but probably stick just to the peeled paint. I'm not really too sure. Um, and then I'm also going to just dab in to the sort of center of the rose or around the rose with the wild honey. So. I'm using my block. You have to excuse the state of my block. It's um, not the best. I am not a very good person at looking after my stamps. I do not look after them very well. So um, I'm just going to just, you know, roughly stamp or roughly, sorry, ink around the stamp. Now, because I've now got my lamp on, I can't really see overly well. You know what's leaves and what's flower so we're just going to have to guess this really so we're just going to stamp it down and I'm going to stand up to do this because it's a little bit easier so that's our first one hopefully this will get a bit better you know as we go on so oops my wild honey and then again my just peel paint onto the leaves like that okay just do the leaves again with the peel paint you can kind of see the rose pattern that we're getting there on the sheet music so I'll just do a couple more and then we'll probably call that a day with the roses and we'll pop down a couple of other images so I just fill in this piece here Maybe one more and then 
probably that will be sufficient or maybe two more actually to um, you know balance out the size of the stamped area okay might as well just go off the page a bit I think so Oops, this is not stamping particularly well. It stamped much better earlier on before I switched the camera on. It's just so often the case, isn't it? You know, I thought I'll have a practice run, make sure it's all looking good and working well. And, um, you know, switch the camera on and it's nothing like the effect that I was having earlier. Which is just typical, isn't it? Right, well that will, that will do. So I'll just clear my these colours out of the way. So make sure I get the lids on the right pieces. Okay, let's move those out of the way. Put them back up where they kind of go. A little pile of stacked ones that I've got. So that's those. Then I've brought along my. I love Paris background stamp and I thought we could just do a couple of those so I bought along some more colours so I've got this tea dye distress ink so I'm just going to cover the stamp now I'm just going to again stamp it down here make sure it's coming out well before I actually stamp it Oops. before I stamp it down and as you can see it's come out a weird colour because I obviously have been stamping it already and um, didn't clean it off in between so it doesn't matter we'll just stamp this here I have to excuse the camera shaking it's because obviously it's balanced up you know piled up on my desk I'm just going to do one more in that colour Just do that here. I oh, didn't get that straight at all. Okay, so I might now do one in a different colour. So I've got some blue here. Sorry, this one is called Faded Jeans. So I'm having lots of fun getting out all of my. Oh, didn't, didn't clean that off. Let me, let me try and do things nicely and look after my stamps on film at least so and my ink pads because obviously otherwise I'm contaminating the colours quite a lot okay right Without another couple of wipes because no doubt I'm going to need them pretty quickly right let's check how that's coming out Beautiful. I love this stamp. I've again had this in my stash for years and years and years, but it's just such a gorgeous stamp. So, another one that I would really recommend. I don't know whether you can still get hold of it. I'm pretty sure you can. I don't know about in the UK, but I feel like I've actually seen it on, um, you know, American websites. So, um, I'm pretty sure you can still get it. Right. So my stamping, obviously, it's not coming out quite so well on the gesso, but it's, you know, it's coming out good enough. So pop the lid on there, pop that one out of the way. And then move this out of the way as well. Uh, I did bring some other stamps to just fill in some background pieces. So, again, I've got these case craft ones, which... Oops. You know again they're quite a handy stamp and here if you can see there's just this kind of cluster of I think it's like vintage adverts and things like that so I'm just going to go and just fill in a couple of the spaces so again I'm just going to use my tea dye for where I'm next to the tea dyed pieces you know, and I'm just going to stamp that down 
you know, doesn't have to be perfect. We are just filling in a couple of spaces. So I might do that here, just around the roses as well. Maybe just, just at the bottom there. I mean, to be honest, it's barely showing up in the tea dye. So, um, but it's just, you know, just helping to add a bit of interest there. And again, just going to stamp here to the side of this piece. And then just go across the top a little bit. Oops. Down the side. And then we'll just go down the side on this one. Okay. And then I'm just going to stamp beside the blue in the blue. So being very good putting my lids on. Not being very good now because I'm now contaminating my stamp and my ink pad. I'll just stamp it off there a couple of times. Okay. Hope I'm in frame. I've zoomed my camera in a little bit more, my iPad, because um, I just kind of noticed that actually I'm not sure how brilliantly, you know, the view is. So I thought. I'm going to experiment with um, zooming in. So, you know, hopefully that might be a little bit of a better view for you guys. Right. Okay, that's done. Just put my stamp back on there. If I don't, you see, it will just get completely buried on my desk because my desk is such a tip. So, um... I'd best move it completely out of the way. Right, so I'm going to pop this out of the way for a minute. And then the final thing, I have got this stamp here. Again, I've had this for a long time. Just looking to see whose stamp it is. Oh, I can't actually read it. I don't know. Perhaps you guys can read that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, mm, no, I really can't read that. Um, but again, you know, you could probably get something similar even if you couldn't get this exact stamp. Now, I'm just having a look to see what scraps I have got here to the side. To see whether I've got just some small coffee dyed paper to do it on rather than, you know, waste an entire new piece. No, I can't see any, so I'm going to have to take, oh, here we go, some that I've already stamped on. So, I'm going to stamp this, I think, in the crushed olive. So, and again, I'm just going to test this out on the book page. Do it again. I have to say, this one doesn't seem to always stamp out so brilliantly. Um, I think, you know, when it's quite a detailed stamp, it sometimes struggles, I find. Um, you know, but it's a shame because it's a lovely stamp. But to be fair, you know, on the whole, and I'm going to say this and it will not do as I've said, but on the whole, I think it comes out good enough to be able to use it. So... Let's fingers crossed that's the case here. Okay, so you can probably see, I mean, that's come out, you know, good enough to be able to use. So that's that one. And whilst I'm, you know, at the stamping stage, I'm just going to take <clears throat> another one. So I've got these ones, which I got from the Wish app. I had seen Patricia Veramontes use these and just thought they were so gorgeous. So that was what spurred me to, you know, use the Wish app for the first time was when I saw her using these stamps and I just thought they were so lovely. I couldn't resist. Right, now let me just find my stamp block and I'll stamp this from the block. I don't normally, I just normally stamp it, you know, itself, but um, I'm trying to be very, 
very good and a bit of a better stamper so just pop those back in the packet okay. right so pop that on there now I may just stamp her just using black stays on I think um, partly because you know I'm not sure how she's going to look in a colour you know being a face but oh don't you just think that is the most adorable stamp I just absolutely love it so I'll just do another one just in case we want to use her again just love her okay right let's clear up my inks a little bit I'm getting a bit swamped here Swamped with stamps, swamped with inks, swamped with mess, <laughs> all over everywhere. Right, and actually, before I put these away, I might just stamp a couple of the little word stamps. So, just going to pop them like that. And again, I mean, these don't have to be straight on here or anything, because obviously, you know, I would cut these off to use them so you know you don't have to overly worry about getting them straight on your on your block okay does that one say Tim Holtz collection just trying to see weirdly enough I think it does which is a bit Strange, isn't it? It might not, but I feel like that's what that says, which is a bit strange, but anyway. Anyway, right, let's pop them back in there. Okay, so we've got our few pieces to use. Let me put some of this stuff away so it's not quite so cluttered up here. Right, so what I'm going to do is and I've already made this you know cut it to size and folded it over just going to make one of those gorgeous flip downs um like Susie from Creative Cafe Girl made I love using those now um so I might just cut out this one very gently just go around the edge to you know make it stand out slightly more just like that it's a shame because the one I stamped earlier which was obviously not on coffee dyed paper and it wasn't such a porous surface that's come out really beautifully so I mean I could use that um, but obviously it's very white so we'll see how it looks in a moment when we come to use it. But I'm thinking I would like to use this portion here. So I'm just going to snip this section out that's got the, the roses that we did. Leave that to one side. I mean, hopefully you can see that. I think it looks really quite nice, to be honest. So um, hopefully you all think it looks quite pretty too. So if I wanted to have that on there, or shall I go for the brighter one? Let's just have a look. I mean, it is a shame because the brighter one obviously does show up a lot better. Now I wonder whether I could just very lightly ink that without smudging it. Let's use my old ink which is still lingering here because it's not so juicy so it won't you know make it quite so wet so okay I 
obviously left this one for sufficient time for it to have dried. So, there we go. Okay, so I think I'm going to use that one because it's obviously a lot, um, you know, more vivid and noticeable. So, uh, yeah, I think I probably prefer, prefer the effect on that one. Now, just need to decide where I want my sheet music. So, probably like that. So I'm just going to cut it down around this point where my finger is. Okay. And just place that there. And then I just want to cut it roughly here. So, you know, and again, obviously I may need to trim this down. So I'm just going to trim it down slightly on this edge. Okay, let's see how that's fitting. Okay, just need to trim it down slightly more in the at the top there. Okay, so I'll get rid of my scraps here. I'm trying to be very efficient and just get rid of things as soon as. I might pop this down here. The reason being is because this is the rose that's really come out, you know, quite vividly and really nicely. So I think, you know, I'd quite like to do that. Now, I am just wondering whether I did want to have any black kind of corners on the thing stamped on here. So I'm just going to grab back my little piece just to see, you know, whether that's going to crowd it too much. So if I just imagine that on there. Is that too much, do you think? Is it nicer being quite delicate? I quite like it. So I'm just going to stamp the corners yeah. Like that. Okay. Okay. Right. Take this back. Pop it there. And I'm just going to pop that down like that. Okie dokie. Right. So if I just glue this on. I'm just gluing this with the wet glue. Oops. Like that. Okay. Pop that down like that. Just press that down. Now I don't want to use my wet wipe because they're still drying because obviously that would just smudge my ink so I'm just pressing it quite gently just you know with my hands right we're gonna have that down there I just ink that up slightly more in this corner because it's a little bit white there probably not but it just felt like it perhaps was so down there so let's just have a look and see what other things we can add to this now obviously I stamped those words excuse me I'm just standing up checking that I'm in frame we stamped those words um I'm not sure that Paris is the right word to have on here and um the other one that I think maybe says Tim Holtz that just seems a bit strange so you know I don't know if I really want those it's a shame because the um, font of the Tim Holtz was really lovely. I've just got that. The 
this was just laying around on my desk it's just a little scrap from one of my background pages but I just thought that went really well with the colours that we're using so again I'm just going to ink that up slightly like that okay whilst I'm there I'm just going to ink up this ticket this is a Tim Holtz um, ticket stamped stamp ticket oh gosh come on I might have to get my juicier ink out for the, the ticket I think right so I'm just going to lay things up here before I glue them on so if I have that there because I don't want to cover up that rose completely you know because it looks quite pretty doesn't it so let's come behind there okay just having a little rummage seeing what I've got here to the side always got obviously an abundance of stuff here so let's just have a look I've got some bling which never ever craft without bling got some buttons got some flowers got a little paper flower really looking for some words here right I've got a word here butterfly which I know obviously at the moment there's no butterfly on here but I have just dug out that one so just again grabbing the vintage photo this button uh, butterfly is obviously quite green so I'm just going to try and ink him over to tone the green down just felt he was a bit too green just going to ink around this this is just a word from a book that just happened to be laying about on my desk ephemera or in, in with my desk ephemera, perhaps I should say. I'm just going to ink this up slightly more now. Now I've got my juicy pad open. Right. Quite like that. So I'm just going to glue this piece down in the first instance. Obviously I'm going to trim off the edge in a minute. I'm not just going to leave that hanging like that. Now, just see what lace and things like that I've got. I've got this one here. So you could just pop some lace. Oops, coming out behind here, I think. <clears throat> Might be quite nice. Just gonna chop that down. I probably should have butterfly and the butterfly kind of close together really but Oops. move that out of the way you see if I put it down the bottom when this folds open the lace is going to get in the way so kind of thinking to the side is better I might just ink that lace up because it's quite bright otherwise I'll just pop that down there. Right. So I'm going to have to trim that lace down a little bit. Or certainly get rid of a bit of that because I don't like that showing. Okay, that, that just softens it up for me. I had a bit of that kind of header row just showing and... Um, it was a bit thick, you know, for the for the piece. So I've got that little flower. I might just ink that up a bit. Okay. Oops. So I quite like that. It's just weird to have these two bits I think so right 
so I'm going to I'm just going to glue this lace down here. I'm just going to use this glue because it's nice and quick drying. Then glue my piece here. And this is just on copy paper. It's it's good quality copy paper, but that's all this is on because obviously I was really using this for my my test. I wasn't really planning on using this one as my actual piece. Okay. So then we've got our ticket and we've got the butterfly. Oh gosh, come on ticket over there I suppose actually oh well, maybe we'll have it like that I quite like that I think so I'm going to hot glue this ticket down that would just help hold the pieces down as well to stop me having to keep pressing them down the word butterfly should we put that on a piece of lace I wonder let's just have a look Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? I'll just ink this up slightly, not too much, just a bit, and pop that like that, and then and, oh, going to pop our word on top. So, again, I'm just going to wet glue that down. And the word on top. Oh gosh, come on, it's now stuck on my fingers. Right, that's the word. And then we're gonna have the butterfly down here. Again, just glue the butterfly on like that. And then we want a little bit of bling in the center of the butterfly. So let me just trim this down. Probably only want two bits there. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Oops. Just going to wet glue this on because um, you know it's just the two bits, so it's a bit too fiddly for the hot glue, I think. Especially as it's sticking on my fingers. Right, so I'm going to have to obviously press that down and weigh that down somehow with the butterfly sentiment on there. Do we want this little flower anywhere? Could just pop that flower on there. So just again, just with the wet glue. I have got that single little gem, which we could maybe put in the center of the flower. It might look rubbish, but we'll just try it. Does it need it? Yeah, I'm going to just put that in there sort of ties the um, butterfly in I think you know the bling from the butterfly in with the bling on the page so I'll just cut that thread off here I could just see a little bit of thread like hanging from this oh gosh come on this is way too fiddly for uh, for me oh I'm not going to be able to uh, get that I think oh well Oh well, we will just glue it down and hope that you know you won't really notice once it's once it's all dry and you know looking pretty. Right, so all I need to do now is obviously trim this piece down that's along here. Okay. Oops. Okay. Let me just now have a look. But I'm still in frame. So how pretty does that look? And then obviously I love my string. So I don't know whether 
whether we will want string or not, but we could just tie it with some string as the, you know, the closure. So I just oops, tie it around. Okay, so and obviously I've had to put the string kind of high up because obviously I've got my lace hanging off at the side um, and obviously you know I would now glue the string across the back so as it's held into place. Um, I don't think I've got a journaling page to show you how this would look but I have got this. So that's how that would look on a page, super pretty. And then obviously you'd open the string and it would flap down for your journaling. So I hope you like it. Obviously I have the other pieces that we haven't played around with yet. Um, but I can see that I'm coming up to 40 minutes. So I'm keen not to, you know, zap up everyone's time. And obviously once we get started on another piece, it would take quite a bit of time. So I hope that you like the piece and um, give it a go. Making some of your own stamped background papers. And um, yeah, hope you have fun. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks, Em. Bye.